Hi, I'm Plami, and in this episode of Raid Decay, I'm gonna be checking out the recent comeback of my second favorite boy group, ATs. Uh, the song's name is Deja Vu, and it's actually the song that I I wanted to win out of the two because for those of you who don't know, ATs tends to do this uh, competition thing where uh, they have two songs and fans get to pick which song gets to be the title track essentially. Both songs get music videos and both both obviously get released but one is gonna be considered the title track and from what I know this one is considered the title track now because it seems like it has won because I couldn't find an Eternal Sunshine music video so that must be the case but before uh, the competition was won I checked out Deja Vu and Eternal Sunshine the spoilers for them I think it was like the performance previews or whatever and from the little bits of these songs that I heard, it seemed like Deja Vu was more appealing to me because <coughs> it just had a little bit more of a uh, edge to it compared to Eternal Sunshine, which seemed like more sunny and happy and everything. And I'm sure I'm gonna like that song as well because I do still enjoy the more calmer and happier 18 songs. But personally, I'm just more of a bigger fan of the darker and edgier stuff, you know? But that is honestly part for the course for my taste of K-pop. But yeah, um, before we get into the reaction though, if you want me to check out the whole album, which I'm probably going to do relatively soon, uh, most likely next week, because I'm going to be starting to do a new way of doing YouTube videos where I'm going to be doing only one type of content for a week, for the whole week. So next week you can expect me to react to a lot of K-pop stuff. But if you want me to check it out, sooner rather than later definitely make sure to comment it down below so i know there is a demand for a reaction to that album and it's not so it's not just my personal investment in checking out those <coughs> those b-sides and also if you want uh, to request me to check out some uh, other music videos or songs from other groups you can do that by commenting it in the comments down below or going to my patreon where at the specific tier that I have created for K-pop content, you can subscribe to it and you get to request me, or should I say demand me, to do a reaction to, be it a music video, an album, bunch of B-sides, it's up to you what you want me to react to. But yeah, anyway, without further ado, let's get into the reaction of Deja Vu in 3, 2, 1. I love that they started doing their uh, company intro in the beginning of the music videos. <clears throat> okay, this one is more of a sexy song it seems like. Hey, your song gets a little bit more Okay, that's a little bit different from his usual rapping. I like it. Who is this group and what have they done with my favorite boy group? What have they done with 80s? Is this the same 80s? Are we sure they haven't been cloned? Okay, that beat is really fucking catchy. At 
first I wasn't feeling it, but it's growing on me, honestly. It's just that at first this felt like such a different song for it, and I'm gonna talk more about it after the reaction. Ooh, are we in the fucking Matrix? That's funny. <laughs> Considering the video that I did recently. Oh, I'm gonna listen to this song so much. Oh, Mingi, I'm so happy to see you. <clears throat> okay. So that is 80s' take on a sexy concept, huh? Is this what their next song is going to sound like, or is this what Eternal Sunshine sounds like? Because I don't remember. Usually they do teasers at the end of their songs, so actually I wouldn't be surprised if there was a teaser for how this song sounds like in, at the end of uh, uh, that song that they did at the end of Kingdom. Which, by the way, I still haven't reacted to that because... I've been wanting to catch up on all the co uh, comebacks and everything before I get to do the Kingdom Finale songs, but I guess maybe I should do that sooner. We'll see next week. As I said, I'll be, I'll gonna, I'm gonna be doing a lot of K-pop uh, reactions, so probably end up squeezing those uh, six uh, reactions somewhere in there. But yeah, I actually ended up enjoying this a lot. Um, maybe you even noticed it in my reaction, but at first I wasn't exactly on board 100% with this. It's not that it was bad or anything, it's just that it felt different. And it is! It is very different from what typically I've uh, used to uh, consider 80s as music. Like, for the most part, it's been either very uh, quick and energetic and hard-hitting rap-heavy stuff, or more chill and summery and kind of somewhat American sounding songs like for example uh, Dance Like a Butterfly Wings, I think that's the name of the song that sounds to me very Americanized and it's kind of like the epitome of the one side of 80s while songs like Wonderland or Fireworks or Say My Name are the other side of 80s this one doesn't really feel like it fits in either one of them, which I think is good because it shows that this group has versatility, which is fine. But it also still feels like 80s, you know? It doesn't feel too distinct from their music, but it still feels very different and like nothing they've done so far. And I honestly am really happy that I ended up enjoying it because I really wasn't sold on it at first. It didn't, because like it didn't feel exciting or hype like uh, those uh, songs that I tend to love the most from 80s, but it also didn't feel like uh, a casual bop that is just wholesome and fun, like Dance Like Butterfly Wings or Wave or... Um, watch my co what was... there was another one, I don't... I, I, don't, I just can't really think of it. Uh, and I, I didn't know really how to feel about it, but the beat with that... Da, 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 da. really managed to win me over kind of halfway through the song and I really ended up liking it especially uh, around the time of the rap parts they were so different from anything we've had from 80s rapping so far and I love it I love it I really love it I, I'm really uh, into this song and I like after that first we got the first chorus I just instantly saw myself in the future listening to this song in my car because it's that fucking good. Because like even for uh, the recent uh, Stray Kids comeback, uh, Thunderous, I, when I reacted to the song, at first at least I wasn't completely sold on it. It didn't. It, at first I was just wary, 
and uh, uncertain about how I felt about the song. But by the end of it, I was completely on board and I was hype and enjoying it. And it seems like it's the case for this one as well. I guess I shouldn't ever doubt my favorite groups, because there's a reason why they're my favorite groups, because they never miss. But still, I just can't help but do that. Because I've been hurt uh, too many times, I feel like. But anyway, let's get into this song one more time, because it was such a good song. I just have to listen to it again. But yeah, uh, let's get into it again in 3, 2, 1. Although it definitely feels like probably more budget was put into Eternal Sunshine, as it tends to be the case for most of their comics. The title track is usually the one with the lower budget actually. Which is funny, because it always gets fixed. Oh, that beat is so catchy, man. I, I, I know people are loving the choreo of this one. Was that Mingi singing for a second there? Because I want more of that. <clears throat> and I know that Mingi was originally uh, intended to be a singer and SoundCloud was intended to be a rapper, or at least that's what they uh, went for, but then they ended up switching. No, Yosang doesn't really get many lines, but I'm glad he gets a lot of screen time in this one, in the music video. Please. Man, music videos recently are really going heavy with the uh, VFX. With like thunders and shit. We had that in uh, Everglow's first. Shake It's is thunderous and now in 80s it's visible. Oh, it's catch as fuck. I love it. It's good. Although I don't really know how to compare it to fireworks. And also I haven't yet listen to the real so I don't know where even that one fits in between these two songs because who knows maybe out of those three songs the real could be the real winner from 80s music this year and would be the song that I would put in my top uh, 20 k-pop songs of 2021 which is something that I do at the end of the year so you can be excited for that uh, by the end of the year but yeah I don't know, I don't know. It's so different from Fireworks, so I just can't really compare to it. Like, on what basis should I compare them? Are there good songs? Yeah. Are they... Uh, how to say it? Um, 
are they kind of putting a new spin on what they're doing or experimenting in any way with each of these songs? I would say more that that is the case more for Deja Vu than Fireworks because Fireworks just feels like uh, another Wonderland if you want to go more simplistic in that description but I, I still think it uh, experiments enough you know and for me Fireworks has been one of the most replaced songs this year so I feel like that has to mean something when it comes to which uh, 80s song release this year was the best yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It might end up being this one just because it feels like... It has more depth, for lack of a better term. It just feels like there's gonna be much more to uncover after listening to this song. Because Fireworks, it's very simple and it's very straightforward in what it is. It's a hype banger. You listen to it... Knowing exactly what it is, it's exactly what it says on the tin. This one, I mean, the tin is already kind of covered, and even after listening to the song like two times, I still don't really feel I've gotten everything about this song. It's kind of like the same case um, as it was as it is for the releases by Dreamcatcher this year. Odd Eye was very much powerful. And uh, heart hitting, while because was more moody and uh, stylistic and edgy. And I don't know, I I don't know for for a Dreamcatcher as well which song I'm going to pick for the top songs of 2021. It's just because Fireworks and Odd Eye are my personal mo most replayed songs of this year. Some of the most replayed songs of this year. But Deja Vu and Because feel more deserving because they're more different and they feel like they have more depth and more uh, edge to them, you know? So yeah, I don't know, I don't know. In terms of a rating, for this song, I... I kind of want to give it a 10 out of 10 because I don't think there's anything bad about it other than the fact that this is obviously the more low budget music video out of the two, which again, as I mentioned, it seems to be a common occurrence with 80s because the fans for some reason tend to pick the songs with the more cheap music videos. I don't know why, but it seems to be the case with Wave. It seems to be the case with uh, Inception. It seems to be the case with this one as well. And remind me if I'm forgetting some other one, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Kind of lost my train of thought there, but... Yeah, I want to give this one a 10 out of 10 again, because... I don't feel like there's anything that they've failed at when doing this. And I did get uh, my mind blown a little bit by how much I actually ended up enjoying it right after the first chorus. Like, that first chorus really fucking won me over very quickly. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll still stick with a 10 out of 10 because it is a really good song, but it's just hard to compare, you know? When I'm rating a group song, I try to compare it to what is the closest thing to it. And, like, the closest thing to this, I feel like, for me, is kind of, as I said, all, uh, Dreamcatchers because. Because they're both moody, they're both kind of darker, I feel like. And edgier compared to the previous releases by their groups, which were more uh, bombastic and uh, noisy and hard hitting. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of want to give it a 10 out of 10, but if I have to give a more uh, accurate rating in comparison to the previous releases by uh, this group, I probably will give it something like a 9.8 out of 10. That's kind of how it feels like. Because for me, personally, uh, Fireworks is a 10 out of 10. This one, I like it. And it's probably gonna be a song that is I will still be loving to listen to long after I've gotten sick of Fireworks. But the fact that it also doesn't really quite have the replayability of Fireworks. I don't know. It just doesn't really feel... Like, it deserves a 10 out of 10 because of that, you know? I guess one way to say it is, I think objectively this is a 10 out of 10, but personally it's more of like a 9.8.
It's essentially a 10 out of 10 though, so I think right, we should stick with that. And yeah, uh, I really honestly can't wait to react to the B-sides, but as I said in the beginning, if you really want to make sure that I'm going to do that first thing, definitely comment down below that you want me to check it out. And yeah, uh, before we end this video, I just want to give a huge thanks to my one uh, and only patron on Patreon, Omari Bridgman. If you want to join that person in supporting me, you obviously can do that by going down in the description below and clicking on the link to my Patreon. There is a specific tire, as I said in the beginning of the video, for K-pop fans, with which uh, you can demand me to do reactions to anything related to K-pop music, be it music videos, B-sides, or albums. It's gonna be completely up to you. You get four requests per month, and one request can consist either of one music video, one album, or... Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know, a bunch of B-sides. It's not really clear right now. I still haven't had anybody request me, so I'm not sure exactly what is too much and what is too little in regards to that, but you get four different requests, so I think that's fair. But if you don't wanna uh, support me on my Patreon, you can still uh, request stuff in the comments down below. It just means that uh, when you do it through my Patreon, it's a definite thing, while through my comments below, it's ultimately gonna be up to me, but it's always nice uh, to comment down below, so at least you can put it in my eyes and maybe I'll eventually decide to do it for personal reasons, not because you guys are asking me, but yeah, I don't know, it's up to you, you decide. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, uh, please leave a like, subscribe, also check out the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me over there, and to my Wattpad where I post my stories, because in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you do enjoy my stories or you simply enjoy my videos, you can head over to Patreon where you can pledge support and help get the channel going. You help support me so I can keep writing the stories you enjoy. But if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine. You can still help me out in other ways like liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think it's pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye!